Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to one of our live sessions once again. Uh, as a part of this live session, we look forward to answer your questions and assist you as much as possible with all your queries and questions, what you may have related to your certifications or testing and other related concepts. So just feel free and if you have any questions, uh, I'm here to answer for the next one hour and uh, make sure that you make most out of such opportunities when I'm live here answering your questions and uh, stay connected in order to ask your questions and listen to other people's queries as well where we look forward to you know assist other people just by listening to these conversation and q a session which adds a lot of value to everyone's preparation so that's really a great uh, opportunity for everyone to have a great understanding of several other things and uh, have a great uh, learning exposure to what testing is all about how testing can really help any, any individual to you know, get a great career ahead. So there are a lot of people who definitely have several type of questions. Some could be related to certification, could be related to uh, the journey in testing, how to be a QA and a lot many other things. So no matter what your question is all about, if it is related to testing, you are free to ask me that and have a discussion. I'm here to respond to you, help you understand those concepts and uh, give you the great understanding, whatever you are looking at. So, right, so I think we are looking forward to your questions. Uh, we already started getting a few of the messages coming in from our viewers. Uh, Mehul says, good evening, sir. Good evening, Mehul. Kishore says, good evening. Very good evening, Kishore. And we have, uh, Kishore was saying, I feel positive whenever I see you online on YouTube. That's always great to have you and uh, definitely equally important when we see audience like you who join in and uh, ask several questions. So thank you for such positive comments and that keeps me quite inspired to do uh, the good job continuously for everyone and just want to make sure that all of you are. And Mehul also agrees to say that. So Mehul, thank you so much for your comment. Uh, it really does uh, mean a lot to me. And looking forward to, you know, capture every individual, whoever comes to be a part of this channel. I think uh, it's my responsibility to respond to every individual and assist them as much as possible. So looking forward to uh, great questions coming up today as well. We're just getting started a little early uh, as I've got some commitments uh, later today. So sort of like making sure that I come live and help you understand your queries resolution and uh, assist you by answering your questions. So just make sure and feel free that if you have got a question to ask, I'm here to respond to all of you. Just drop that on the comment box and I'm here to uh, you know, answer those things. As usual, getting started with uh, the comments which we got from a lot of the peoples around the week again. Uh, they have succeeded with their examinations. And of course, there are many people who keep commenting and messaging me through LinkedIn or other sources that, you know, the tutorial was helpful for them and uh, it helped them understand the concepts in a very um, crisp way and uh, to the point. So they could understand the concepts in a much, much, much simpler way and they could succeed in the examination. So I would like to congratulate each one of them who just let me know uh, that they have succeeded with the exam. Uh, congratulations to all of you. And just feel free if you have anything in future, as channel is quite open for everyone to you know, assist them with their preparation and learnings and adding more milestones to their portfolio. I'm completely here to assist you as much as possible with your preparation. So team, uh, look forward. If you have any questions, just uh, drop it in the comment box. I'm here to talk about it and help you understand the same. Okay, meanwhile, as we wait for some of the questions to come up on the chat, uh, probably like again, may maybe we will be planning to conduct a foundation level certification training uh, for our audience uh, somewhere in August. 
But again, uh, not sure about the dates as uh, I have a calendar a bit busy with a lot of other commitments. And uh, that's again for the training purposes only. It's not that my personal commitments are lacking here in terms of helping you, assist you with the preparation. It's just that there are other trainings happening and uh, uh, really uh, sometimes it's so packed that I may not be able to find enough time to do a public batch for all of you. But yeah, uh, July also we skipped uh, the session. Uh, maybe we'll definitely be having a session over the uh, weekend uh, in the August month and would definitely love to you know, have your participation there. If anyone who is interested to uh, appear for the ISTQB certification, uh, just feel free to, you know, you know, recommend them that if they want to really uh, go into a training to understand a lot of concepts, I will be here to assist them. So you can definitely share that information with any of your colleagues, friends who might be looking forward to uh, prepare for their ISTQB certifications. I think uh, we are still waiting for some of the you know, questions to come up. And I think the moment I say that, there's no question coming on from Mehul. So now I'm pursuing um, MCA, which ISTQB core should be concerned after this. I think uh, Mehul, uh, the very first certification in ISTQB is ISTQB foundation itself. So no matter what your graduation is and uh, no matter what uh, you know, the degree you have done, it does not really make a difference to ISTQB. Uh, no matter, you know, anyhow, whatever you are getting uh, masters or bachelors, you have to start with ISTQB foundation as per the criteria of ISTQB. So the very first course for you, which will be uh, right ahead to get started with is ISTQB foundation. And once you're done with foundation, you can definitely target other certifications as foundation becomes the criteria for all the people to uh, you know, get started with other set of certifications in ISTQB. So you can get started with ISTQB Foundation. There are great tutorials available on my channel, which you can refer to, and definitely you can uh, appear for that. Okay, so yeah, looking forward to more questions, team. I know this is Saturday, and of course, uh, people might be busy enjoying their weekend, and I'm also thank you know, changing my time for some reason. So I'll be here patiently waiting for your questions. So if you've got a question related to testing, related to testing tools, related to any of the certifications which we have on our channel, you are just free to let me know uh, those questions and I'm here to respond to them before we wind up with our show today. Okay, we have got another one coming in from Eva. Uh, any ideas where I can find more exercises to prepare for the test techniques chapter online? Uh, of course, uh, there are uh, modules, okay? There are blog spots, there are websites which generally have these information, but I just don't want my audience to get confused as a lot of people came back to me initially and told that, you know, a lot of questions there on those portals are uh, incorrect and do not have the right information to answer the questions. So they basically lost their confidence. So I'm not sure I have stopped doing that recommendation part completely because I myself evaluated those questions and realized that there are uh, really those questions which are not up to the mark, uh, not as per the syllabus, not as per the guidelines of ISTQB. They're just created by people who don't care that who will be referring this to. So I think uh, I won't be recommending you as far as you yourself would like to explore some of the websites and find out. But believe me, I won't uh, suggest to you as far as you have been through the three mock papers. If you think the three mock papers, you are able to answer your questions correctly, you don't need anything else, Eva. That should be fine. Don't, you don't Just don't go for anything else that might ruin your confidence and bring that down by stating that you could not be able to answer these questions. So, you know, I don't want you to take that risk. Okay, as far as you think you will not lose that confidence, you'll be able to judge that if these questions are correct or not, you can definitely give them a try. But being an official person in terms of like, you know, having you lovely audience as a part of my channel, I don't want you to misguide Thus, I don't recommend any official website. And it's not about a competition that why should I be redirecting my people to somebody else? It's just that they are not bothered about your results. They're just bothered about making money from those block spots and they don't even have a courtesy to respond to you or help you 
correct those questions so that you can really take it seriously so meanwhile i'm coming up with my own uh you know website where i can have all these uh, sample questions the work is in progress but i'm not sure how far do you have to prepare for that so maybe other uh, in future you will be definitely getting benefited out of it you also say that it's not many info in the syllabus and without example of exercises with boundary value analysis or equivalence partitioning it would be difficult i do understand so i'm not sure if you are given a try to three sets three official papers which are available on istqb website they do have a great uh, number of questions there so please give them a try if you have already tried them i think that should be fine for you to understand and uh, if required um, maybe you can just give it a try to some of the portals outside but again keep it in mind that they can be wrong so if you are not able to answer that question or if you are not getting the right answers do not just you know uh, try to test your confidence because these people are sometime or most of the time wrong in asking their questions okay yeah and meanwhile as i just told you you know for everyone else that uh, we are trying to come up with our own portal to give you justified questions which will be asked for the syllabus and uh, definitely have some good exercises for you to practice <clears throat> Okay, I hope that helps you. Uh, Kanika says, uh, "Hi, is there any tool that can be used to scan locators for all elements in a web page?" Um, I'm not sure if there is an special tool for that. Of course, uh, when it comes to Selenium, you do have an inbuilt option where you can actually check your, um, you know, the locators and validate that if it is able to, you know, respond to that and is able to detect it. so you can definitely go ahead with javascript uh, uh using the console and you can run those xpaths and uh, the uh you know css path or any sorts of you know locators which you are trying to use and uh, you can see that if that is being identified as a unique thing so you do have a you know option inbuilt within selenium using the console of the uh you know the inspect element and that can easily identify and give you the uh path which you can basically use so but there is no such a uh, special element or special tool which can do that independent of the you know automation testing tool okay i hope that answers your question as well kanika yes team do we have any more questions we keep uh, dropping them in the chat box i'm here to respond to your questions help you understand the concepts better and assist you as much as possible in your preparation and understanding of the software testing concepts okay just uh, keep dropping them and i'm here we'll be looking forward to answer them okay the next one coming in from selva selva says good evening very good evening selva just uh, suggest a certification other than istqb for an entry level tester uh for an entry level tester i'm not sure if uh, there's anything um, specific for example you can go for tool based certification selva for example if you are preparing on selenium or if you are preparing on uh, you know jira or something so you can get certified specific to those things additionally you do have csm foundation which can be taken by an entry level tester but i don't know how much credibility that csm certification adds to your portfolio but yes it gives you a recognition that you know how agile works but you will not be called as a scrum master at the entry level okay but it will give you complete end to end understanding of what is agile all about how does it work how does it add value so that's where the csm certification uh will be something which is relevant for an entry level to take up and understand or get certified with agile concepts this is other than istqb and of course for each uh, test level or like test tool which you will be learning about you can definitely get certified with those as well for example if you're looking forward to get certified with um uft or load runner or maybe jmeter so no matter which tool github and all those sort of things you can definitely look forward to get certified with them that would definitely assist you with uh, building your portfolio more into like a, a devops kind of person or uh, in fact the testing related tools who can be added okay Right so Evil says thanks for advices you are welcome and all the very best for your preparation just feel free to let me know if you got more questions with you Yes team uh, looking forward to more questions if you got one just feel free to drop that on the chat box 
we are just quarter past our time. We have 45 minutes more to go from our session and we'll be definitely here to assist you with all your questions, whatsoever it is. You can definitely ask me anything which is related to testing and testing tools, your journey about testing and how to build a career in testing. In fact, the ISTQB related concepts, I'm here to explain and talk about it. Okay, I think uh, we're just looking forward to more questions to come up for the day, and uh, we just don't have much crowd uh, appearing for asking the questions, but this is completely uh, fine. As far as you have a question, you can definitely make use of this opportunity, but if you don't have a question, there's no harm at all, because uh, that completely depends on people when they have the question. So just feel free and let me know if anyone has any questions. I'm here only to respond to you. There's no specific agenda that why I come live except answering your question. So just feel free if you've got a question with you, I'm here to respond to that and help you as much as possible to understand the concepts of testing and make you understand those concepts. Yes, team, just feel free. If you've got a question with you, I'm here to respond to that and help you understand the concepts. Just you have to type your question or copy paste your questions and drop that in the chat box. This session is all about answering your questions, queries. So I'm just calling out everyone who might be interested in getting their query resolved. Again, at the same time, of course, you do not have a criteria that you must be a channel subscriber to ask me a question, no matter who you are, whether you follow this channel or not. It's just that if anyone has any questions, you are just free to ask me and get your queries resolved. So it's more about resolutions to your questions, no matter uh, whether you are a part of this channel or not. And we never ask anybody. Um, we don't beg <laughs> like other YouTubers on uh, to anyone that you should be a subscriber, you should be a you know person who will be sharing my video or something. Now we just talk about being a technical person it's more of like technology so we just try to help you as much as possible uh, through the tutorials through the live sessions but just want to make sure that if anyone has a question and they find difficult to find the right person to respond to it then i'm here to assist you so just make sure that you feel free to let me know no matter your question can sound stupid to anyone else but for me it is just a question so no matter what the question is all about just feel free to drop that in the chat box and I'll pick it up and talk about it. Okay, so we got another message from ABC. Okay, hey ABC. Currently working as manual tester with one year of work experience. I would like to switch as automation tester after a couple of years. What are the skills which I require? Uh, number one, you need to learn any of the automation tool to get into automation. It could be a functional automation or it could be a non-functional automation that you can decide. Functional automation means you can learn Selenium, which is something good at this point of time to uh, get started with the career in automation. And the uh, second one is, of course, your uh, non-functional side. So you have a lot many specialized testing. For example, you can talk about security. You can talk about usability. You can talk about performance. Uh, there are a lot of other non-functional testing, but the trending one could be 
security and uh, performance testing. So you can pick up any of the tools from there, which are trending to learn about it and get started. And uh, these are the two things which you can target about. So first decide whether we want to continue with functional automation testing, then learn about Selenium. With Selenium, you definitely have to learn the language. So it could be Java, C Sharp, or Python. So you can pick any of these languages to learn Selenium. I think Java with Selenium or Python with Selenium will be a good idea for you to get started. And second, if you get into performance testing, uh, you can learn about JMeter or you can learn about Load Runner. So both the tutorials are not JMeter, but uh, Load Runner tutorials are available on my other channel. So if you want, you can refer from there. Selenium is yet to come after that. Currently, I'm uh, uh, working on the uh, UFT tutorials. And soon after UFT tutorials, you will be having the Selenium tutorials. So if you want to have some time to prepare for that and definitely would like to learn from me, then you can wait for a moment and uh, you will definitely have the Selenium tutorials coming up. So this is the channel, which is on the command box right now, which is testing in nutshell. There I post a lot of videos related to tools and uh, practical oriented things. So you can definitely find a lot of interesting uh, tutorials there as well to help you understand or get into the automation concepts. Okay, so that is what I would recommend you uh, to take a decision on and uh, get started with your preparation at the earliest. Of course, it takes some time to be proficient with automation and definitely answer some interview based questions so you can look forward to such things. Yasin, do we have any more questions to be asked? Uh, just feel free to let me know. We are here for another around 30 to 40 minutes of time, and we would like to answer as many questions as possible. But in case you don't have any questions, you can definitely stay tuned, as a lot of people will be asking questions. So that way you still build up your knowledge, you build up your skill set by having a great understanding of uh, this Q&A session. And that definitely adds a lot of value in your preparation, learning, and definitely uh, enhancing your skills. So just feel free and stay here for some time. You can definitely listen to a lot of conversations, which will add a lot of value to your skill set as well. In case not today, and if you may have to ask me questions later, you can always reach out to me through the YouTube channel, comment on any of the videos. I'll be there to respond to you. Comment or reach out to me over the LinkedIn. All my video has a description of LinkedIn ID. You can connect with me. You can ask your questions there on a private window, and I will be answering you there as well. So just feel free if you really want to have a question being uh, you know, resolved or any query to be answered, just feel free to let me know that. OK, uh, ABC also says, before learning Java, should I need to learn any other basic programming language? No, I think um, Java will anyway be starting from the basic concept, so you don't really have to have a you know, basic learnings of any other programming language. You can actually get started with Java directly. And uh, even if you don't have any understanding of any programming languages, you can start from scratch. Any any tutor, any tutor who will be teaching you Java will definitely start from Hello World, which is the most simplest thing uh, to get started with any programming languages. So I think uh, that should not be a problem at all. You don't really have to do anything. But yeah, if you think you want to get started with anything else, maybe you can try with C, C++, or something. But uh, I, you really don't have to do that. If you want to do something, then start with Java itself. That should be fine. Okay, You really don't have a prerequisite to learn Java. Java is just an independent another language which can be started by anyone. Uh, there's a man. I don't seems like a compliment for everyone. Good job, man. So hey, good job, man. <laughs> good job, man says that would getting a QA certificate will help me get into gaming QA tester or they can they even need one. Um, getting a QA certification is a kind of you know a recognition for an independent tester that he or she knows the professional ethics and professional workarounds of testing world and does qualify you to be called as a tester. But of course, being a gaming tester 
requires you to have a better understanding of what the gaming world is all about. So if you can definitely explore more about what a gaming tester need to have in order to become a, a you know game tester, you definitely have to play games and be aware of what are the uh, you know in and outs about the games, how it should be tested, what kind of factors do you really consider uh, in order to test a game. So that would be enough with this certification because we I don't think you really have a specific certification for a game tester so far, but yeah, the ordinary ISTQB foundation level certification will definitely give you. We do have a second level of certification called as gambling industry certification. And these are related to uh, the mobile apps uh, which make uh, gambling apps, okay? Uh, which is like kind of, you know, Rummy and all those Ace23. And, uh, you know, you talk about Forex apps, uh, which goes into the stock market. And so, so you definitely uh, can look forward to gambling certification as well, which can definitely add value to your portfolio. But for a game tester, you don't need any specific certification. You just need to have a basic ISTQB certification, which would be fine, and knowledge about what gaming is, gaming industry is all about, how you basically test the games, uh, which definitely can be done by a great uh, game player as well. So you really don't have to be a tester for that. If you are a very keen observer on playing a game, then you definitely know what a game testing is all about. Okay, so yes, feel free if you have uh, got more questions, I'm here to respond to them. Just let me know. All right, you're welcome. You see, in case you think that this live session is going to help you, assist you with your preparation, do not forget to drop a thumbs up on this video. I just want this live session to reach as many people as possible in the world so that they can come and get their queries sorted out, ask their questions, and learn the testing concept in a very, very, very simple way. And this is not about my videos. You can leave my videos uh, being unliked or being uh, not shared. I don't care. Even if you don't subscribe to my channel, that's absolutely fine with me. It's just that this live session where I try to answer as many people as possible, I just want this to reach out to n number of people. So that's the reason for only my live sessions. I request people to drop a like only if you are happy. If not, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> but I don't think we have got a negative feedback so far for the last uh, two and a half years or so. Yeah, people have been always responding to me with positive comments. And we always hear uh, only good, good, good feedback from all of you. So thank you so much for making this channel a great channel, a great platform. Uh, to be, you know, appearing in searches across uh, all the web portals when they look forward to ISTQB certification. So thank you so much for being a part of it and bringing this up to this level. Though we just have around 11,000 subscribers, but believe me or not, right now if you go to Google and you type ISTQB Foundation Tutorials, I think the first recommendation as a YouTube video will be our channel. So it's all definitely because of you because we don't work on any of the SEOs. We just believe on organic. If people love it, it will automatically be on top. If people don't love it, no matter what you do, you cannot come up on any of the searches. So we would again like to thank each one of you for giving that love and support and uh, making these uh, reach out to many people across the world. Meanwhile, we have got another question from Kaushalya. Hi, Kaushalya. I'm doing ISTQB test manager this month. The sample paper consists of 56 questions, but in your training program, it says there are 65 questions. Have they updated it, sir? Uh, no, they just don't have 65 questions to put it to you on the sample paper. So there are only 65 questions, but uh, in the sample paper, they just gave you a template of 56 questions because they didn't have more questions to give it to you at that point of time. So it's not that uh, they lack questions, it's just that they just want to give you examples of certain different topics at least once. So there's no point giving 65 questions just to give you a exact template of it. So 56 questions will still cover all the topics of the certification. So you don't really have to worry about that if there's a change in the syllabus or something. At any point of time, if you want, you can always navigate to istqb.org and there you can definitely find the number of questions which are there. 
So right now, if you want, you can go to istqb.org, select the test manager certification, and go to the exam structure. You will find 65 questions being listed there to be answered in 180 minutes. OK? It's just that the sample paper has less number of questions, at least covering one topic at once. So there's no confusion. OK? And all the very best for your preparation. And I need to thank you, sir. I did foundation level only by going through your playlist. I got good marks and got passed. And now I'm following your test manager playlist. Kaushalya, thank you so much for letting us know. And this is really great when you come online and share this result with all of us. Because not only me, of course, a lot many other people who might, will be listening to this video post the live session, they will just look forward to this tutorial as a proven one to be referred for preparation. So this is what you do by coming into the live session and sharing your experience with all of us, which makes a trust factor for everyone that, yes, the tutorial which I'll be looking forward to, investing my, investigating my time there, oh, sorry, investing my time there will be fruitful at the end of the day. So thank you so much for doing that for me here, being a part of this live session. And I really wish you all the very best for your test manager certification as well. And they are really pretty detailed for anyone to follow. You don't need any other assistance if you can just go through that 14 hours of tutorial, which will prepare you well. OK? So all the very best, Kaushalya. And do let me know if you got more questions. Yes, team, if you have got a question, just feel free. I'm here to talk about those questions and respond to you as much as possible. Just feel free. Just type in, copy paste your question and drop it on the chat box. I will pick it up and talk about it and respond to your queries at details as possible. Because, of course, sometimes people do ask me questions on the comment and it might not be beneficial enough if I start typing some of the messages on the chat. And uh, that could not be even giving you the right justification. That's the reason I started this live sessions every Saturday, so that the questions which I cannot address uh, using the comment box of YouTube channel, or if I cannot justify you why exactly this is right in a written manner, then this live session can be really helpful for all of you. So just make sure that you make most, sort of, most out of this opportunity where I come live uh, for an hour time to help you understand your doubts, clarify your questions, and help you learn the concepts in the much, much, much simpler way. Just make most out of this opportunity and ask any number of questions what you may have. I'm here for 60 minutes of time, and each minute counts by me uh, being present here to answer every single question. So yes, team, looking forward to more questions. There's an hold, and uh, I think we are just waiting for more questions to drop in on the chat. and. Uh, Definitely look forward to answer your queries. It's raining heavily here, and uh, you know, never know when you can expect a power failure, but yeah, it's a very Monsoon here. It seem just feel free. Uh, no matter what your question is about, you can look forward to any of the questions uh, from testing point of view, certifications, or be it about uh, career path in testing. It can be anything, whatever you may have as a question. Just feel free to let me know. I'm here to answer any of your questions and respond to them. We have another 25 minutes to go from this session. Uh, if there are no questions coming up, we'll trigger our timeout of five minutes. If there are no questions, we will definitely wind up our show earlier as well, because we don't want to create a live session or live video 
uh, keeping me sitting idle for a long time. So we just don't want to break that person's record by being an idol on a live channel, live video, doing nothing. So <laughs> just uh, let me know if you have got a question. We'll be here to respond to them as much as possible. And if we are done with the questions for the day, we can definitely wind up. But yeah, the that, that triggers a five minute timeout. If we don't see any questions for the next five minutes, we'll be calling off our live session for the day. But we have five minutes to see that. And never mind, you know, if you don't have any questions, I don't mind. I'm fine, absolutely, because you can always ask me questions next week. Uh, that is every Saturday we connect for an hour so you can prepare well, come up with a list of your questions, keep dropping me on the chat, and I'll be here more than happy to answer your questions. All right. Meanwhile, we've got the questions here. <clears throat> Arun. Arun says, hi, friends, and Neeraj. Hello, everyone. That's from Arun. And hey, Arun. I'm uh, from Automotive Domain. I've completed ISTQB Foundation. Can you suggest me next certification related to Automotive Domain? Arun, uh, first of all, congratulations with your ISTQB Foundation certification. And the next certification we have for you is ISTQB Automotive Tester. So there is a certification on the specialist tree of the ISTQB, which is on the right side of it. So if you go to istqb.org on the home page, if you look at the right side of it, you will find a certificate called as Automotive Tester. And that's a domain specific certification There you will be learning a lot about how exactly the overall software testing lifecycle for an automotive industry is all about. What is uh, ISO 26269 and you do have your AutoSpice, AutoSAR, and definitely different environments what you use as a part of automation automotive industry like mill hill cell and zill the combination of those so you can definitely make use of this certification to add more value to your portfolio and that could be the best relevant certification for you other than the iso or automotive specific industry certifications so one is of course istqb automotive tester which you can target the next or otherwise you can always target iso related certifications which are especially meant for your automotive standards. So these are the two opportunities which you can look forward to to add more certifications to your portfolio. OK, um, we have another question coming in from Hatter. Uh, Hatter says, how many uh, questions in exam for ISTQB CTFO? Uh, there are 40 questions. All are MCQ. And uh, each question carries four options to be answered. So yeah, you just have to answer these 40 questions to get certified. And uh, what is the next ISTQB certification after uh, Foundation CTFL? OK, after Foundation CTFL, you can go up for Agile certification. You can even go for your role-specific certification, like test analyst, technical test analyst, or test manager. In fact, you can also go for specialist certifications which are like automotive tester, automation tester, security tester, uh, performance tester, mobile tester. So all these certifications are also open for you once you are done with CTFL. And all the details can be definitely found uh, in my very first video of introduction for any playlist. OK, Hatter, you can just go to any of my playlists and watch the first video. That explains you about every single certification. So you can see the entire tree, and it will also give you the qualification criteria. So CTFL foundation is a criteria. Once you get certified, you definitely can look forward to uh, any other certifications in different trees. So agile, role-based certifications, and specialist certifications. All are open for you. You can take any of them based on your work profile. I hope that answers your questions, Hatter. And uh, Arun says, thanks, Nijer, for your guidance. You're always welcome. Just feel free to let me know at any point of time if you have a question, and I'm here to respond to you. Koshalia comes back, says, uh, sir, what master's program, what master's program specification will you recommend for a QA engineer? For example, master's in computer science or master's in information technology or other suitable suggestions. I think uh, the one which you can look forward to is uh, MBA. That will be more relevant, as I do remember you asked me a question about the test manager. So MCA or MSC uh, might not be something which might be uh, you know relevant for you any longer, because you're not looking for a core developer job or maybe a core ID person job. You're more looking forward to be a manager, and MBA would be the more relevant master degree for you, 
with operations in IT. So we do have a domain or a kind of a field in MBA which helps you to get prepared with IT operations. So you can look forward to that as a degree to be added to your graduations or you know your education. That would add more value in the industry compared to MC or MIT. <clears throat> okay. All right, so we are looking forward to more questions, team. If in case you have got some of them, just do not hesitate, feel free. Do not forget to drop this thumbs up on this particular video, uh, especially on the live session. If you are happy with the service, what I'm providing to all of you, I just want this video to be reached to as many people as possible so that they can come and ask their questions. So if I have responded to your query and help you understand your concept, just feel free to drop a thumbs up on this video. I just want this to reach to any number of people who just want to ask their questions. Okay, uh, Hatter also has another question. Uh, what is it the best way to learn for ISTQB CTFL foundation exam? I read syllabus and another book, but it's too much information and the exam tests are completely different. I'm watching your playlist. Uh, as far as you're watching your playlist, uh, my playlist, that should be absolutely fine because that's a very crisp way of giving you all the information, what you need to know in order to pass the examination. And second is the official syllabus, which you find in the istqb.org, okay? So these are just two things, what you need to get certified. Yes, of course, there are recommended books, which I do recommend. And I, I myself is an author for the ISTQB Foundation book, but we only recommend those books for people who are completely new to testing and they may definitely want to explore a lot about detailed understanding. Sometimes we do have people who are like, you know, book lovers. They don't really get from an audio video kind of concept, but they love reading contents from a book and they better understand from that. So books are written by authors, including me, uh, for such audience who really love to learn things from books in a detailed manner. But if you think the books are having too much of content, then the books are not for you. So you have a crisp syllabus available on istqb.org and you do have a tutorial available on my channel. So these two things put together will give you 100% success rate. So you don't need anything other than that. All right. So just feel free and uh, let me know if you have any further confusion to get started with your preparation. I think this is more than enough. People have done it without even going through the syllabus, just the videos, but I officially recommend you to go through the syllabus once, which will give you an assurance that yes, the tutorial has covered everything. At the same time, tutorials are just brief, but yeah, a detailed understanding of that is in the syllabus, which will be easy for you to follow. But believe me or not, the syllabus has answered to all your questions from the examination. So if you have been through the syllabus at least once, it will 100% guarantee you that you can pass this examination. Okay, so just go with that and all the very best for your preparation and happy learning. You see, many more questions. We have another 15 minutes to go from our session and would like to answer as many questions as possible before we sign up for the day. So make sure that you ask me at least 15 questions in the next 15 minutes and I'll be more than happy to respond to you. Hader also says, I have the exam on 3rd of August. I'm very unprepared after reading books and syllabus. Yeah, I think the reading books could have done that because they have definitely a lot of uh, information which might not be required for every professional. So I would recommend you right now, you just close your book. You do close your syllabus if you have been through that and just listen to my tutorials, plug in a headphone, keep listening to it like a story and that would do your job, okay? You have around like another six or seven days to go for your preparation. So I think for the next one week, target each chapter and complete each day one chapter and you should be done with that. You don't really need anything else to, you know, uh, call yourself as unprepared after that. Just, just follow this instruction, it will help you. Koshila says, when I go through few QA senior people, I notice most of them have a good, very good developing background. Um, it just comes with the flow, Koshila. It's not a mandatory thing that you need to have a development background uh, or you really have to do a kind of, you know, 
evaluation of the code or derive any test cases. It's more of like test manager who can understand what development is going on and based on that, what kind of your contribution will be. Uh, mainly a manager responsibility will be to call out the flags much earlier in the life cycle. For example, if I'm working in agile methodology and talking about a particular sprint, then right at the user story grooming, I may have to raise my hand and say that, okay, from QA point of view, we have these kind of concerns and we wanna highlight this particular risk. So being a manager, what it takes for you to be aware of the concepts, not practically you know, doing those stuff yourself. And that you can definitely learn from your experience. Now again, these will be done definitely by your team now, not as you being a QA. Being a QA manager, it takes you more importantly to do the plan out things, coordinate with the business analyst, coordinate with the development manager, coordinate with the uh, you know other stakeholders to understand what's the overall uh, planning is all about for the project, what's the scope, what's not in the scope, what things are going to be created in the upcoming sprints. And that's, that's what it makes you to be more uh, prepared to contribute with a better effective plans and take definitely the necessary control actions from time to time and gather those matrices which showcases the testing effort and progress from time to time. So being a manager, we really don't want you to be uh, you know, a well-detailed person with development as well. As far as you understand that what development is going on, what sort of uh, you know, uh, application is being built, what sort of features are being implemented, what sort of configurations we need to consider in terms of testing. Now again, for example, if I have an application which has a user as well as a manager access, and I'm trying to test a manager feature with user access, then I will never find a bug, right? So I have to switch my profile. I need to have a manager profile as well in order to log into that app as a manager and try to test it. Then I realize, okay, a manager is able to see different things. But I just can't raise a bug if I see as a user and I say, I don't have access to these components. So what we need by saying that, or when I look at your statement or your question here, what I understand is you're talking about such things. But for that, you really don't have to be well-versed with Python or Java or any such languages to understand what code they're writing. There's no point, even if you understand the code, you cannot tell a developer to change the code, right? Because there's architect driven, there is an architecture for that and they will be definitely driven by that. Your job is more to understand that what is this application? What's the data flow? What's the control flow? How the system can be tested? So being a QA manager, it more importantly requires you to just understand that what dev is doing and how you can make it better. That's it. And, so, and I've been behaving a, like a QA manager for a long time and I'm not saying that I don't know dev activities. I do know, but again, it's not a mandatory thing. Nobody asked me a dev related question during any of the interviews. If I go for consulting to different organizations, when I uh, you know, consult to different organizations to improve their QA process, they do look forward to me as a consultant or as a director of testing and try to you know, hire me for a contract basis. But they generally do not ask me a development related question because they look at me for a QA manager. And that QA manager is responsible for improvising the QA process, QA activities, not the dev activities. So even if I have the knowledge, that is good for me so that I can understand better what devs are trying to say, but I'm not going to interfere in their dev activities or not going to implement any of that. So it may look good to anyone from outside, but doesn't really make any sense that you should prepare for it or should you start working on it no, it should be fine as far as you can understand the application and how it works. That's more than enough for a QA. I hope that makes sense. If it's yes, just let me know. If not, you may definitely have more questions. Stanley, Stanley says, suggest me on how to crack the ISTQB advanced level. Uh, to crack the advanced level, all you need to do is close your eyes and believe that you are already there, okay? Once, it's not a physiotherapy kind of thing, okay? It's not a meditation step. It's more of like, you know, when it comes to the advanced level, a person has to already be in that particular position to get certified. No matter you're talking about test analyst, test manager, technical test analyst, whosoever, whatsoever certification you're talking about, you just need to be, have that feeling that you are a test manager already. 
Because when you start feeling that, then you have uh, that you know understanding being built that can I make decisions? Can I select this matrix for this job? Now, I'm, I'm a manager. I'm making a decision on that. What kind of you know consequences can result into failure? What kind of lack into the documentation can result into a poor testing altogether? So you know there are certainly a lot of things uh, which you really want to make sure uh, to be understood like a test manager itself. So you don't have to be a tester to get certified with advanced level. You have to be a test analyst. You have to be a test manager. You have to be a technical test analyst to get certified. So feel like that you are already there and then listen to all the conversation. Have that mentality of uh, you know, leading a team, having those leadership qualities, decision-making, controlling, managing, and maintaining things, and everything will be pretty much simple. Okay, this is what I did when I was looking forward to get my certifications done. And I was just like having around six to seven years of experience, but I was targeting the test manager certification. And I just already was feeling like, because I was already working with a lot many organizations to improvise their test process. So I already had that feeling within me that though I don't stand at this position, but I'm a test manager. So when I started understanding the concepts, I realized that, okay, this is how it should be. And I, I understand that. So this is what my job, like, you know, it was, it made my job much easier and much simpler to get certified with it. And I hope that should work for anyone else as well. Okay. So all the very best, Stanley. Do let me know if you have more questions. I don't say, is it better to do a master's from a recognized university or doing a certificate, a certification oriented course from, a, from Skilllink? What is your view? Uh, I'm not sure what the skill link stands for, if that is a standard organization doing some certifications and a master from a recognized university. I think masters from a recognized university would definitely add a lot of value rather than some online you know, courses which you get from LinkedIn and other things. That's just a top up for you to let people know that, okay, when you were idle, you do something. But graduation has a value. It does add value to your overall portfolio, okay? Increasing your band, increasing your growth in the organization, a lot many other factors. So graduation is graduation. And additional certification is a top-up. That's it. So you, we, we, oh no, not you, we. <laughs> we just can't compare graduation with any of the certifications. It's just that certification certifies what you do, but graduation gives you the qualification to be what you are, okay? All right, so Kaushita says, thank you. Uh, thank you for your explanation. You are always welcome. Hatter says, how is the job as a tester with one year experience or less? You are working with developers and clients. I want to know how hard is this type of job? Um, yes, of course, uh, being a tester, it requires you to consistently collaborate with developers and customers. In fact, no matter how old or how experienced you are, at any point of time, you might be required to interact when you have certain queries. And especially if you talk about the agile methodologies, agile environment, every individual has equal contribution. So you will not come to me saying that, hey, Neeraj, I have these questions. Can you talk to the client about that? I would rather come back to you and say that, hey, Hitler, if you have a question, then why don't you reach out to him when during you know certain calls and other things, drop a mail and check this particular thing and get clarified. Because I want you to keep motivated. I don't want you to create that chain that everything what you ask should come from me and I'll do that on behalf of you because I don't want to be your leader at all. I want you to be that leader yourself that yes, I have the capabilities to speak to the customer. I have the capabilities to interact and collaborate with other stakeholders to get all that information, what I need to get in order to get my job done. So everyone is self-organized. Everyone is motivated. Everyone is independent. So it doesn't make any difference if you are one year experienced or you are two and a half or five years experience. You may be required at any point of time to interact with other stakeholders within your project in order to get your job done. And I will, if you ask me being your manager, I would definitely encourage you to come up in the uh, seat and get started interacting, showcase yourself. If you are finding an issue, I won't say raise it on my name, right? To get the credits. I will say no hater, raise it on your own. 
and so let the people know that hater is doing some job here all right so that's how it works okay so hater says thank you Erwin says thanks for the enlightenment okay you're welcome and team i'm all here to respond to you assist you as much as possible so this is my job uh, that's the reason i uh, get live to respond to your queries so that you know people at least look forward to me as someone who can assist them better give them some guidance help them prepare well for the certifications or at least their qa as a career path because not most of the people come online to answer your questions i don't know how many people really do that but i'm just worried about myself as far as i have a willing to respond to your queries help people understand the concepts i would love to do that All right, we have got another five minutes remaining from our session for today. If you've got a question, quickly drop in and uh, I'll be talking about it and trying to respond to you quickly on that. And uh, do not forget to drop a thumbs up if you think you are happy with the session and I'm trying to help you as much as possible. I would definitely like this live session to reach out to any number of people so that they can participate in, ask their questions and get their doubts clarified. And this can happen with your one small like. Yes, team, just feel free. We have got a few more minutes to go from this session. And if you've got a question to ask, just do not hesitate. Let it be anything about I'm here to respond to you, help you understand the concepts, get you those certifications, what you're targeting for, and at least help you to understand a concept better. So just, just feel free, do not hesitate, drop that question here and I'll be talking about it. Okay, there's a question coming in the chat. Hello Neeraj, thank you for this channel. Would you suggest any books to read for uh, advanced level test manager? No, I think my tutorials are more detailed than any book which you need to know in order to pass the examination. And the books could be very, very thick if I think you're looking forward to one and they may not be properly helping you to get the certification done. So one is the tutorials which I have are very detailed compared to all other my tutorials. So it's a 14 hours of video, which does make a lot of sense. It's like a full-time training which you are getting. So that would be more than enough plus for the official syllabus. Two things, if you go through them, you are done and definitely look forward to some of the sample questions to get an idea that how the questions will be appearing in the final examination. Or going to the syllabus uh, foundation and one test manager a few times is good. Uh, a few times, yeah, maybe one or two times should be fine, but not a lot than that, because that can still make you, you know, off with your preparation. So just keep it uh, one to two times. Foundation is fine. You may definitely go through the tutorials, no need to go through the syllabus because they are crisp and you can cover them faster. Uh, for advanced level, of course, I would recommend you to go through the syllabus. If time permits, go through two times because they will definitely guide you and boost up your confidence. But I don't recommend any books for advanced level. It's more about your understanding and experience. And books may be too much for that, okay? Unwanted things which might not be required for you to refer and simply, you know, getting you engaged for the long journey to go ahead. All right, so all the very best for your examination there. Yes, team, we've got another few, oh, just one minute to go from here. Do we have any questions? Just feel free to drop that. I'm here to talk about it. You're welcome. Okay, there are many questions, papers for practice to get a grip on questions that will come in an exam. Uh, yeah, uh, that's very difficult. Now we can ask those people who made a lot of questions on foundation that why don't you create some questions on test manager? Because they don't know what the examination is all about. They just have copied the questions from here and there and pasted it on their blog spots. And really, really call out such things because as far as you don't take the responsibilities of helping someone, you don't have any responsibility to confuse them. 
So, you know, generally it's difficult. ISTQB do not release other than a sam sample paper of their official website. So you generally don't find other, uh, you know, sources to prepare more other than the certification questions which you have on the official website. Yeah, most of them are outdated, true. And they don't even believe to respond to your commands, you know, they have never turned back to their own blog spots. <laughs> That's the best part of it. At least I keep a track of all my comments and you know what people are saying about my videos and have the you know guts of coming live and answering and facing the audience. So I can say that okay, I can tell you anything because I'm here to you know accept it. But when it comes to people who don't have the courtesy to you know answer you, I don't think you deserve to have even a kind of a hit on your web page. And that took with the wrong questions. Yep, so true. Okay, a quick answer before we hit the tip. Anyways, we have hit the time. Uh, Raghavendra says, is your video enough for taking ISTQB foundation exams? Yes, Raghavendra. Based on thousands of people commenting back that videos were alone enough for them to pass the examination, I would love to recommend you on behalf of those thousand people that the videos are enough to prepare for your examination. But being an author of these videos, I would also recommend you do not forget to go through the official ISTQB syllabus at least once before you hit your examination. Okay, so that should be enough. Okay, there's also comment saying best bet like you say is your videos and syllabus. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. So anyways, we have already hit the clock for the day. So we are down with 60 minutes of our time to talk and answer your questions. And it was really great. Again, having you all and different audience to be a part of our sessions every time I see different people coming up and asking their questions. I really feel very happy about because I realize that there are people who want to get answered and definitely I'm doing a good job. People love to come back to our sessions and ask their questions. Before I close, uh, many thanks and stay blessed, very kind and patient and truthful. Thank you so much for such lovely comments. It keeps me fueled up with a lot of inspiration. Those comments are really important for me to keep me inspired to be back here and help you every Saturday between 7 to 8 p.m. to answer that. Today, we just started a bit early as I had some commitments, but never wanted to take off so that I don't keep you, you know, a shallow one to say that, okay, I will not be here today to answer your questions. So I just tried to manage a bit early, but answering your questions anyhow. So that's all from this particular live episode team. Should you have anything else, stay away uh, for some time, but we'll be back on Saturday again answering your questions. If not, just quickly drop me a quick comment on any of the videos. I have a dashboard where I can see your comments and respond to them. So looking forward to have you again next weekend on Saturday between 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. to answer your questions once again. So that's all from this particular live episode team. Thank you all for being a part of it in order to contribute to the success of this live session. If you have anything else, feel free to let me know. Drop your comments below and I'm there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for being a part of this live session team and happy learning. Stay safe. See you next weekend. Take care and bye-bye.